This is Twit. Uh, later today, Steve Gibson tells me he's going to talk about Apple's promise to add end-to-end -end encryption to iCloud backups. He will give us a more technical uh, break. But this is another huge shift from Apple. They've had this capability, it is said, for years, but the FBI talked them out of it because, of course, the FBI would love to be able to see what's in your iCloud. When Apple, in the San Bernardino uh, case... When uh, Apple refused to help the unlo uh, I FBI unlock the iPhone of the San Bernardino terrorist, uh, they did say, but if you bring it back to his house, it'll probably sync with iCloud and we can give you that. <laughs> Apple has historically, it, it's come up in many, many cases, um, been able to give the unencrypted iCloud information to law enforcement. In fact, uh, it's, I guess we've all kind of thought maybe they keep it that way for that reason. But... On Wednesday of last week, they uh, they announced something called Advanced Data Protection. Actually, they've had that for some time. They're going to expand, though, the categories, and it will finally include end-to-end -end encryption for backups on iCloud as well as photos and notes on iCloud. Your thoughts? It, it's funny to think about it this way, um, but in many ways, this is not an enormous technical change because what the, the truth is that everything is in pretty much not in, like not mail or calendars or contacts, but almost everything that you do is stored at Apple in an encrypted fashion. The difference is that Apple also has a key to it, right? You've got a key and Apple's got a key. So Apple can view it and you can view it. And with this new feature... What Apple is saying is for this class of stuff that has previously not been uh, just your eyes only, we could also access it. We're going to um, not have the key. We're not going to. We're not going to keep that encryption key. That means that you'll have to generate the key on your phone. It will be encrypted on your phone and in transit, and sit at rest on Apple servers, but they don't have a key. Only you do on your phone. Right, because what was happening is like those iCloud backups are encrypted. It's just that Apple has a key to decrypt them. Right. And what Apple is saying is, okay, if you turn on this feature, we are throwing away our key. We don't have our key anymore. We should then point out, this is how Dropbox yeah. works. This is how almost all cloud services work the that the way you've said before, which is that the, the service has the key. And there are reasons. We've talked about this before Lots of security reasons. now. There are reasons besides simply handing your information over to law enforcement, <laughs> it gives them more capabilities. If they can see it, they can dedupe, they can do all sorts of stuff. Google does right. this. Google scans for CSAM on your Google Drive. This is well known. Uh, right. That's because they have the keys. And it's funny because there's actually some information that is not encrypted. My understanding is actually a lot of the, th the fingerprinting, the... Um, the the deduping Apple that that metadata is not necessarily encrypted, um, so Apple can still do deduping, but they can't see what the file is, which is so interesting. They could see certain attributes of the file, I guess, right? Which means that they it. could potentially do CSAM scanning if they wanted to. Um, but the like side issue, like the the big issue here is what they're saying is if you flip that switch, a couple of things are happening. We don't have your key anymore, which has a huge impact on a lot of people who can't who lose their phone or they forget their password and they can't get into their system and right now they call up and say and the, the it's a proverbial story but it's totally happened which is i i lost all the pictures of my grandkids because i lost my phone and apple said takes them through a process and unlocks their account or my uh you know my mom died and yeah. i uh, i would like yes. to get into her stuff so right. i can now, settle apple her estate so Apple added a thing called the legacy contact, which actually allows you and Apple to work together to unlock a, a third party account. This is actually part of this is an extension of that. So now if Apple throws away their key and you're like, well, now if you lose your stuff, uh, you lose it forever. And we there's no way to go talk to Apple about resetting it because we part of the deal here is that we can't do that now. But they have the system that is similar to the legacy contact where you basically can say, I want to identify an Apple ID and say that they can work with Apple and me all together. They've got a piece of the key. Apple's got a piece of the key. If they work together, they can unlock my account for me. Um, so or by the you way, can print I out just, a giant string. I just and uploaded that way. Uh, or downloaded rather the latest 16.2, and it is now on. Yeah. So they are distributing the this US. now in the U.S. Yeah. Um, here yeah. I am on the screen that says advanced data protection, and it's all of those things, just as it shows in the Verge article, and mm -hmm. you can turn it on. But Apple says because Apple will not have the keys required to recover your data, 
you will be guided through verification of your recovery methods in case you ever lose access right. to your account. In other words, right, gonna, because they're going to try to make you. Can you zoom in a little well, bit on that? They're not going to late. They're not going to let you turn this on without having having that backup because they know that this yeah. kind of thing happens. So, yeah. so like, yeah, and and if you don't have a person you trust with this, um, you can do that thing that a lot of other sites will let you do. Like, uh, one password did that, and I I have that somewhere. Is the the long, long, long code that you can put in the safety deposit box, and if you enter in that code, it will also unlock your account. It's an alternate key. Oh. <laughs> this is but for most people, you use another person. In order to do this, you have to make sure. So I've only updated this phone. Ah, yes. You have to have all, everything updated. Your Apple TV. All your devices. Your home pods. Your uh, iPads. Your everything. Your watches. Every single every <laughs> device that's attached to your <laughs> Apple ID. Which is why this is probably a 2023 or let's be honest, 2024 kind of thing. I it, even have to update to the latest yeah. version of iCloud for Windows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Otherwise, how would they you know, be able to access So this explains why, because everything got pushed today. iPad OS, iOS, Mac OS, uh, and I, I, I realize HomePod OS <laughs> and Watch OS have also been updated. And that's probably much of it is to support this new advanced yeah. data protection. And good luck if you have an older phone that doesn't run the, the very, very latest software either. Yeah, so. you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think that some of the stuff starts to come into light because a lot of this, you know, nothing like this gets done in a month, right? This has been probably something they've been working on for a couple of years now. And, you know, the CSAM scanning that we, that we talked about earlier this year, the, the, all those things are, are kind of connected to this. Like we have to make people feel safer that, Hey, we're about to cut all the access off <laughs> to, to everything, to be able to see everything. Um, and, but because the, the number one thing that's going to come up is terrorism, you know, well, what do you think is going to happen know, with uh, China? What's China's response going to be to this? They don't want this. The, they, the, they don't the FBI, that, the Fibbies don't want this. No, I mean, the UK has a law against this. Australia has a law against this. Uh, Apple's going to be facing a lot of governmental requests at yeah, this point. I feel like their strategy here is basically to say, we're going to do this because it, it lets us say this is what we think it should be. We don't think we should have that information and that law enforcement that's using this. It's sort of a weird effect of how we built the cloud. But in the long run, it's your data and we shouldn't see it. That's right. And, then and if, they, I'm sure, would love not to have to comply with those requests. And, and if they are forced to, they're going to be like, it's not us, right? It's not us. Yeah. Right. The government made us. We want to protect your stuff, but they're not going to let us. And, and they're going to force the governments to make that decision. feels like as big a turnaround for Apple as the App Store thing. And this one's not uh, being compelled by anybody. I, I think this is really an interesting I, turnaround I, I for Apple. I don't think it's a turnaround. I think, so. I think it's just yeah. an evolution. I think, that it, I think that this is where Apple... There's this... Apple, you know, again, if Apple did everything it wanted to do around our own personal security, people would get freaked out because they're going to lock this whole thing down. They're going to keep on locking things down. They're going to keep but what they're doing is they're kind of closing one hat real slowly. It's it's what we call sneaking up to a horse. You know, a horse won't if you don't move very fast, the horse doesn't <laughs> I, I know you're coming. I disagree. I think Apple I think, didn't want to do this. Clearly they didn't. They've had this technology for years. Uh, I don't think they wanted to do this, but I think they had to because at this point this isn't a way to just don't worry about I, the ads we're selling and the information we're gathering. See, we really do care. There was this tendency over the last few weeks, we've talked about it, to start thinking Apple's only playing lip service to privacy. So this, by doing this, maybe they maybe they always wanted to, but by finally saying, you know, we're going to we're going to take well, a chance with the U.S. government, the Chinese government, the English government, and we're going to do it. Because it does really, at this point, now you say, yeah, I guess Apple does care about our privacy. But we've talked about this for a couple of months, but to do what they're talking about is $100 million in three years of work. Like, like it's not like, this isn't like a, hey, let someone, let someone close this off or do whatever. For them to actually release it is an enormous well, amount of money. Especially because I'm know, sure they're going to really do conservative. It right. It's probably yeah. closer to billions right. of, of dollars to make the infrastructure change that we're talking about at the scale that Apple does at the, in any of this stuff, this is the kind of thing that can't fail. So mm -hmm. it can't be like, we're just going to throw it out and see how it goes. It has to be, yeah. You know, very slowly tested and, and managed by very large teams. This is a this is a massive uh, operation to do this, and so yeah. this is not something they just decided to do this fall. This is something they decided to do in like 2018 or 2015. Yeah, I, I think that I think that they had to get the weather report 
very, very, very carefully before they did that. Meaning that what if they put in all this time and all this trouble and all this effort uh, and all this risk to our current way of doing things only to find out that, hey, right now, and looks like Congress is about to pass a law that makes it impossible for us to do this. That's a waste of time and money. Also, the, also the ability to make sure that they can support this correctly. They're going to have a lot of people who are going to be, uh, they, they, if they had lost their phones, as we were saying before, if a, if a loved one had passed away and they had not set uh, set plans for what happens to their data after they go. Apple had a long bureaucratic paperwork involving process to get that data and those photos back, but at least it existed. Now they're just going to have to tell a lot of people that I'm sorry, all of your Christmas videos from 10 years, so the past 10 years are just gone and there's no way we can get them back. But I, but, I, but, but finally, this, this has always been something that has kind of bothered me that uh, that there is always this big, big loophole. And we think that privacy is a basic human right. If they can lock it, lock down our backups, why are they not doing so? And what is their reasoning for not doing so? Because it's not just privacy against uh, being observed by uh, by uh, by companies or other people. Privacy is privacy for everybody. Our privacy against our own governments is just as important as our privacy against our employers, privacy against uh, Google and Facebook and all these other people. So it's no good if you're just saying that we are not going to we're not going to defend your privacy against the most the people who have the greatest amount of power over you, which is, again, the people who own the army, the people who own the police. According again, to hold on. According to Reuters in 2018, uh, four years ago. Apple was planning to do this. I remember this story very well. We talked yeah. about it. Uh, and according to Reuters, who I said that we have six sources that said the FBI asked them not to, and they did not. So I think it's BS to say, oh, yeah, Apple had a, it took all this time. We had to really do it right. Apple was willing to do it and wanted to do it because obviously they don't want to hand over this information. And the FBI asked them not to. And uh, so you're giving them an awful lot of credit that I don't think they deserve. I think this well, is I, something I give them credit now. I don't know why what's changed except that I would say what's changed is there is the reputation. If they're ready to do it in 2018, it just means that they, that they were working on it in 2015. It, this is not a minor thing. Well, I know like, I'm just pointing out about. unless Reuters got this completely wrong, which is possible that they could have done this four years ago and didn't. So they've had, they, well, and they had, they had, they had, you know, the thing is, is you got to find the right time to do it. And then you have the, again, the, all the other implementations, you have to piece all these things together over time. You know, I think that the thing is, is you have to say, okay, we, we have some kind of CSAM scanning. We have this thing. You can see that the, these, those pieces make more sense in the context of we're going to close everything off, you know? And so the, so I think that the, um, that those, there's a lot of things that have to get put into place. And you can't do it after something that when the FBI is rattling sabers is not the time According to According to one product. current, uh, this is from, this is a story from 2020 and Reuters. More than two years ago, Apple told the FBI it planned to offer users end-to-end -end encryption when storing their phone data on iCloud. According to one current and three former FBI officials and one current and former Apple employee, under that plan, primarily designed to thwart hackers, Apple would no longer have a key. This is exactly what they've done. Uh, in private talks with Apple soon after, representatives of the FBI's cybercrime agents and its operational technology division objected to the plan, arguing it would deny them the most effective means, blah, blah, blah. When Apple spoke privately to the FBI about its work on phone security the following year, the end-to-end -end encryption plan had been dropped. Uh, so, yeah, maybe oh, maybe they dropped it because it was too hard or they hadn't weren't ready, but it sure sounds like the FBI talked about well, it. And, and, and that was in the, 2018. And also the, the incoming Congress is not FBI friendly. And so the thing is, is that they're not, you know, so the other thing is, yeah. is that yeah, they've Apple's made, obviously they put their finger to the wind at some point and said, I think we can get away with it now. Cause, cause now that, you know, with the Republican Congress, there's no laws that are going to go in that are right. going to, you know, we give the FBI any more control than they have now. And so the thing is, is if you're going to drop something, this is, you drop it right now. <laughs> so, so, so it's a, the timing isn't, you know, what else they dropped, in, which is very interesting. Is their plan to see scan on your phone for CSAM, which was very controversial. Well, a lot of us didn't like. Yeah. yeah. Again, we understand what what they're coming to. It just felt weird, you know. To to you know. Yeah. So we know mean, it was a bad idea, but it's interesting that they've now said. Uh, first, they said we're going to delay it. They have now said no, we're not going to do it. They also say they're improving two-factor authentication by allowing users to use hardware keys like Yuba keys, which I use, uh, early next year. Furthermore, uh, you can put recovery information. In fact, probably should. Uh, You'll get a reco you'll get recovery codes. You should probably put those somewhere safe, like in a pass in a you know password manager. Maybe even print them out and put them in a safe. 
Um, yeah. Because this, there is no no more recourse to Apple. And I think if if you want to be generous to Apple, you could say that was the reason they didn't do it, not the FBI, but just it was going to be hard on users because I'm sure they get you know thousands of requests every year from people who've lost their. You know, their I password. think that story you quoted, Leo. Um, you know, they said they intended to do it right, so I don't think it was ready then, but it was on their roadmap, and then the FBI tried to talk them out of it. It looks to me a like a year one later of the it was reasons, off the roadmap. So yeah, yeah, or they or they weren't talking about it with the FBI, right? But that legacy contact feature, like that's basically this, right? That is a part of this, which is we need if we're going to do end-to-end -end encryption down the road, we got to find alternate ways for them to decrypt their account because. Otherwise, it's just way too dangerous if Apple can't do it. Somebody else needs to. So they came up with this idea and they rolled it out first as the legacy so that so that a trusted person could go to Apple and say, this person has died. I need to get into their account. And they work through it and they've been authorized and it and it happens. Well, and right. But that same flow is basically what happens for this. So I, I it, it, they were building the pieces in the background, I think. But, yeah, they all also politically. Um, somebody asked me the other day, why announce this now and not at WWDC? And I thought, this is the kind of thing you don't announce where you give governments and law enforcement <laughs> lots of time to think about it. Really, yeah. right? Like, you announce it now and roll it out and then say, now now tell me what you're going to do about it. And, you know, they may. China may do that and the U.S. may do that and who knows. But it's not the thing you give people six months to think about. And so they didn't. I'm Jason Howell. What do you get your favorite geek who already has everything? Well, I know just the thing. It's a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news and podcasts available. And with a Club Twit subscription, they get even more. They get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, the members-only Discord, exclusive outtakes, behind-the-scenes and special content, and exclusive shows like Hands on Mac, Hands on Windows, and the Untitled Linux Show. You can purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubquit, and they're going to thank you every day for it.